Hey, everybody. Welcome to another weekly webinar here at Route Consultant. If you have never met me, never seen me before, my name is Josh Gregory. I lead the uh, training consulting teams here at Route Consultant. Uh, I, so I work both with buyers getting into the space and with contractors trying to figure out the best way to run their business. So all sides of the equation. Uh, for everyone who comes every week, who's been here all the time, welcome back. Uh, again, if this is your first time or if you come here every single week and have been for years, we still want this to be a place where you can learn, ask questions, hopefully have a little bit of fun. Um, but before we get to that, uh, as I do every week, I've got a quick disclaimer that I have to read. Uh, so Route Consultant is not endorsed by and is not recommended by Federal Express Corporation, FedEx Ground, or Amazon. Route Consultant is not sponsored by, is not approved by, is not associated with, and has no connection whatsoever with Federal Express Corporation, FedEx Ground, or Amazon. Uh, all that means is, uh, you know, we're not going to be sharing any, um, you know, secret, uh, non-public information here, but we do hope that we share some helpful information that you all learn from today. Uh, so as a reminder, and for those of you who've never been here, maybe it's new information, but at the end of today, after we've gone through some updates and some content, we will open this up for uh, Q&A for any questions you have. So as I'm talking, as my co-host is talking later, uh, feel free to go ahead and put the question in, uh, but make sure you put it in the Q&A button at the bottom. If you put it in the chat button at the bottom, we'll miss it. I won't see your question, so make sure you put it in the Q&A button. Also, uh, for us to answer your question, you first have to answer ours. So the question of the week this week is, what was your favorite candy as a child? And is it still the same? Uh, has it changed? Has it evolved? Do you have a, a higher taste now? Uh, whatever the answer is, when you go to the Q&A, first answer that question and then type your question. And so we'll read your answers out loud and then we will answer your question live. Um, before we get into the content, I just wanted to go over a couple of new events and new listings that have come out. So um, the big one, just want to make sure it's on everyone's radar as a reminder, uh, the Expo, the big contractor event that we hold every year, and this year is in Vegas again, uh, is open. Registration is live, and that is on July 28th through the 30th, and it is in the Paris Hotel in Vegas. Uh, so, you know, we're going to cover all of your food, all of your drinks, but more importantly, this is a time for you to come out uh, and connect with all of the contractors across the country to learn about things affecting the space and uh, things that you can do to improve your business. So uh, all you have to do is get yourself there. Everything else is free and included. So um, the important thing is that hotel block does fill up. So try to go ahead and reserve your, your hotel room sooner rather than later. A uh, couple of other little events we have coming up. We do have a happy hour in Washington, D.C. next week on April 12th. Uh, again, still free, completely free. Uh, this is going to be uh, more of a kind of more intimate event, just a chance for you to connect and network with others in the D.C. area. So uh, hopefully I'll see you all there next week. Uh, we also, a little bit later this month on the 20th, are having a road show in Nashville focused on uh, vehicles and fleets. So everything centered around fleet strategy, what you can learn from that, that helping make better fleet decisions. We will also have trucks on site. There will be uh, ride and drive events, for you, ways for you to test drive some new trucks. So uh, make sure to jump out and, and register for that as well. Again, April 20th in Nashville. Uh, and then the last one is we have our next new investor summit coming up. So if you're brand new in the space, trying to find out if this is the right space for you, uh, we, we always have these summits throughout the year, virtual and in person. The next one, though, is in person, and it is line hall only. So it is exclusively focused on line hall. So if that is interesting for you and you want to attend, that is on April 21st in Nashville. So those are all the new events coming this month. Just want to, if you're interested in any of them, they're on our site, on the events part of our site, and you can go ahead and register. Uh, before we get to the content, just a quick update on the five new listings that have come out this week. Uh, the first one is in Kansas. It is eight PND routes at five hundred ninety thousand uh, dollars. There is a, a manager, a spare truck, uh, and this is an operation with a, an improved fleet. Seven of the trucks are twenty nineteen and newer. So when it's only eight routes, and you know most of the trucks are new, that's fantastic. So again, uh, that one is in Kansas. The next one we have is in Georgia. It's nine routes at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This one has a manager that handles all the daily operations and it has two spare trucks as well. 
Um, uh, and this one is also currently six days, so it doesn't service Sundays. Next one is in Florida, nine routes at $599,000. This one has uh, a manager that independently runs the operation. Uh, it's a beachfront property. Um, and then it is also has three spare drivers available as needed for contingency. Uh, important on that one uh, is that that one does not include trucks. So that is one where you would need to either assume the current leases or bring your own trucks. Uh, the, the last two are line haul opportunities. The first one is in Georgia. It is three line haul runs at 1.5 million. Uh, and this one is a dedicated run, an unassigned run, and a wild team run. It's a really small, profitable operation. Uh, you can operate it remotely based on the way it is operated right now uh, and a really efficient team in place. And the last one we have is out of Nevada. It is 11 line haul runs, 3.15 million, uh, three dedicated solos, five unassigned solos and three spot runs. Uh, and this one has a manager as well. Um, you know, and this one has a combination of leased and owned vehicles uh, and it has some assumable truck debt. So lots of options on that one. So if any of the ones I mentioned today are interesting to you, um, whether it's P&D or Line Hall, just reach out to uh, the team, uh, just kind of send in an inquiry and we will make sure to answer all of your questions. Okay, so uh, I've gone through all of that. So uh, I have brought... Uh, today, my co-host is going to be Jesse Smith. Uh, Jesse has years and years of FedEx experience on the operations side and has helped lead all of our DRO and operations across the country in our own organization. So I brought him on today to talk through some important updates around both Vetter and scanners. So uh, Jesse, you want to go ahead and jump into it? Hey, Josh. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always a lot more fun when I'm on this end of the conversation <laughs> instead of on your side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So y'all today, we're going to talk about um, some better updates. If you don't know what that is, better is video event data recorder. That's the, the primary technology we have to kind of monitor our drivers in cab while they're driving to make sure they're not distracted and things like that. It also helps you kind of prevent unjust lawsuits that we sometimes see. If your driver gets in a collision with another vehicle and it's the other person's fault the vetter camera, the forward facing camera will pick that up. So um, that's what the technology is there designed to do. Along with that, um, what it does is it measures what's called KIs. And KIs just stands for key indicators for whatever reason, FedEx leaves out the performance part. We typically hear KPIs. They leave out the performance part of that. These are just KIs that are in relation to safety. So um, what's happening, Josh, is that uh, in, a, in, in several weeks on June 1st, actually just you know, a couple short months here, um, there are the four key indicators that you have to maintain contractually. Uh, these are safety things you have to maintain. Uh, before, they were related to the operational ability and functionality of the vetter devices themselves. So do the cameras power up and connect to the internet? Do you have a driver assigned to a camera that is running in a truck that is moving? things like that, just to make sure that the, the, the technology was installed properly, you know, pointing at the drivers, it should have been things like that. It was designed to monitor that it was working. But on June 1st, it's switching over to driver focused, driver behavior focus. Okay, so what that is going to mean, you still have four KIs that you have to pass, you have to maintain four out of four KIs contractually. But now it's going to be things like distracted driving, failure to wear a seatbelt, speeding 10 miles an hour or more over, and then finally, incomplete stops or failure to stop, all right? So if you don't maintain all four of those things, you have to maintain a certain threshold of those every single month, then um, you're not gonna be able to um, maintain contractual compliance with FedEx. So essentially what we're talking about, if you have a certain number of dispatches per month, okay? It's essentially how many events of not wearing a seatbelt, distracted driving, things like that, are you having as a percentage or a, a, a quotient, uh, for to use a math term, of your total dispatches? So um, again, it's it's really just you know I'm not going to get into like what the thresholds are, but essentially if you've got too many distracted or poor driving behaviors relative to your total number of trucks on the road every month you're going to fail one of the KIs or maybe more than one. So staying below that threshold, making sure your drivers are doing safe behaviors while they're out on the road, that's really what the new focus of the of the vetters, uh, the new KIs are going to be. Did you want to add anything to that, Josh? I would just say this is, you know, 
obviously this is something FedEx cares about for you to be in compliance, but this is something everyone should already be on top of. These are the things, the behaviors that if you let get out of control will lead to accidents. And, you know, an accident means, you know, there's potential uh, insurance claims. Your driver could get hurt. Your truck could get hurt. You've got a truck off the road. There's just, there's escalating costs. So this is, this is something that you should be doing already. So it's, this is not a bad thing. This is honestly a better <laughs> KI system than the one before in terms of what we should be staying on top of as contractors. Yeah, I agree completely. And, and that's, you know, again, we, we understand kind of why the KIs were the way they were before, like making sure they connect, right? The, this is when the technology was getting rolled out across the network, right? So now that it's pretty much in every truck, I mean, if you're running a truck that doesn't have better in it, it's either a, a rental vehicle or you should not be running that vehicle, right? So it's required just like ELDs are required in all the tractors. You've got to have better cameras in all your PD vehicles and your tractors for that matter, but especially in your PD vehicles. Um, now it's really more focused on, on driver behaviors now. And so if you need to access that, if you're not familiar with how this works, all FedEx gets is a pass fail score sheet from your safety vendor, right? So you have to sign up for better functionality, better service with one of our safe with one of the safety vendors in the space, right? And there's several out there, but that vendor will send a report to FedEx every month that says, yes, this contractor passed three out of four KIs, four out of four KIs. You can see all the information about your KIs in your in your vendor dashboard. That's not something FedEx can can tell you, right? They just know. Did you stay contractually compliant? You need to get with Ground Cloud or whoever is your safety vendor to find out specifically what you failed. And now you're going to get those updates as they happen, right? You're not going to know, you know, if a driver isn't wearing a seatbelt, you're going to get an alert about that. And that's the nice thing about vendors like Ground Cloud. They will tell you right away. They will offer you coaching events with, you know, video specific to whatever the issue was. So, you know, here's a 30 second video for your driver to be coached to correct you know, the behavior for next time. So it doesn't happen again. Right. So um, that that's kind of where it's all switching to. And like you said, Josh, it really is something that you need to be taking a, a vested interest in anyway, whether it's required or not. And honestly, I, I think this is a really good thing for the space and going from, you know, are all my trucks connecting to the to, to connection with, my, you know, are the cameras making good connection to the network? Right. So occasionally what that would mean is you'd have to go out to your spare lot and fire up a P1200 once a month or once a week just to make sure it was checking in and connected, right? Even if you don't ever use that vehicle, you had to make sure a certain percentage of your fleet was checking in with its better cameras. Now it's really specifically focused on driver behaviors, which again is what the technology was set up to do in the first place. So that's kind of what we're talking about as far as the better changes. That's a big announcement. Again, that's June 1st is when that goes live. Um, it, this is something you should already be looking at. Okay. If you're, if you know that you have an issue with drivers speeding, not wearing seatbelts, I would get out ahead of this and start coaching your drivers to be like, look, you know, right now there, there's not a formalized system in place to deal with this kind of thing, but FedEx is not messing around when June 1st hits. Um, you know, we got to make sure we are staying in, in, in compliance with FedEx and you got to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. We're, we're professional drivers out there, right? We, we don't need to be treating this like it's not important. And this is part of the, the you know, the QualCert program. It's all rolled into the same thing, right? Safety, safety, safety. If this is not a number one focus for your business, then you're doing it wrong. That's all I can really say. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're always, whenever there's standards like this that are rolled out by FedEx, if you feel like you're being nitpicky or feel like you're being the bad guy, you can always push it on FedEx and say, look, you know, we're all on the same side here. I don't want to micromanage you, but we got to, we got to comply with these standards. But this this one is one of those where, yes, you can make that argument. But at the same time, if your drivers don't feel that these things are important, that's probably an issue you need to understand either from a coaching perspective or is that driver someone who needs to stay a part of my staff? Yeah. Last thing I'll mention on this, Josh. So, um, you know, what, what are some of the penalties that you could expect to face outside of, you know, your KIs are failing, right? So that's that's a, a conversation you would have with your senior manager, p and &E manager, whoever is kind of your safety person that's going to keep you on track with your KIs. But in terms of your drivers, I mean, it's already in your schedule I of your agreement. What has to happen if a driver has a third seatbelt infraction in a 12 month period? Right. So or what, whatever it is. And ultimately, you're under DOT laws first, your state laws second, and then your agreement in that schedule I third. So 
make sure you're following to the letter what is required of you contractually and by the government to stay, you know, to stay legal, right? If your drivers are having too many infractions, you can't just let it continually go. There are certain things that are prescribed as curative actions that you have to take for your drivers. And again, most of those are going to be in Schedule I. They're going to detail what those actions are that you need to take. So um, with that, you want to go ahead and transition into our next piece here, Josh? Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about scanners. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's really three main scanner updates that we want to talk about today. A couple of them, the deadlines have kind of, kind of already passed, but I just want to mention them if you're not familiar with uh, for, with what they are, I'll, I'll kind of tell you what they're about. But the big one, which just got announced to a lot of terminals today, was on April 16th, um, the MET customer driver release option is going away. Okay, so the new Star 5, the scanner software updates that is rolling out, you're no longer going to have the ability to choose MET customer. Okay, it may not seem like a big deal because, you know, if you're new to the space, you may be assuming, well, if the driver is meeting the customer, they should already be getting a signature, right? That actually is not very common. Okay, in the in the space right now, the only time drivers are getting signatures if it's is if it's actually required by the shipper. So if it's like something like a firearm, ammo, alcohol, high dollar items like televisions and things like that, those are the kind of things that the shipper says, yes, I want a, sig a signature on this, or they've declared a value on it such that FedEx will require it. Uh, just to kind of make sure that they don't get hit with the claim later on if the package gets lost or stolen. But now what FedEx is saying is you can't put you can't put met customer if you hand the box to the customer and walk back to your truck. You either have to do what's required for all other kinds of deliveries, which is picture proof of delivery or PPOD, okay? Um, which that is not something you want to do if you hand a box to the customer. Do not take a picture of the customer holding the box. Okay, that's not what needs to happen. What really needs to happen is the driver needs to go ahead and pull out their scanner and get the signature on the box. Okay, this is potentially going to be a sticky thing for drivers and contractors in terms of efficiency because on the occasions where the driver does meet the customer unexpectedly, so let's say they're you know walking to the door with a little envelope. Uh, it's a mailer from a some company, right? It doesn't. It's it's a you know cost a dollar, right? They leave. They're about to leave it at the door. Customer sees them coming, opens the door, hand it to them. Well, you got to get a signature on that now. Okay, so that's going to cost a little bit more time, and it maybe cost a little bit of confusion with the customer. Like, why am I having to sign for this? This is a you know I didn't even order this, right? This is a mailer from some other company. Why do I have to sign for it? So be aware that may be an issue that may come up. Okay. Um, it's not going to be just as simple as handing the customer the package anymore. There's a little bit more to it. It's going to cost a little teeny bit more time for the times when you don't expect to meet the customer and you do hand them the package. Just be aware that that is coming. That's April 16th when we expect that to roll out with this next scanner update. Uh, the second one is the SIG acknowledgement deadline. The SIG, uh, we say that's shorthand for safety information guide. Uh, that's an OSHA required document that basically anyone who works in a warehouse type environment works with hazardous materials. Any industry or company that deals in that environment has to have some form of training that covers proper hazmat handling techniques, dock safety, things like that, right? So that's what the SIG is, primarily relates to hazmat procedures. If you have a, a hazmat that breaks open on a box on your truck, okay? You have to, every year the drivers have to go in and digitally sign off that they are responsible for the information in the latest version of the SID. So what FedEx just did was on April 2nd, they said any driver who has not done their annual signing off on the SIG will not be able to dispatch in the scanner. In other words, they rolled the functionality into a, a dispatch stopping event. So the scanner now can recognize this FedEx ID of this driver has not, has not maintained their compliance on the SIG for this year. Therefore, until they do that, they cannot log in. So it's not a big deal. You go to my ground biz account as the driver and you sign, yes, I've received the training. I'm responsible for the SIG and you go on about your day. So it's not a big deal. It can be a little bit of a headache in the moment, but if you're not familiar with that process and you have some drivers that your BC is saying, hey, I don't know why they can't log in. That might be what it is. We just came up on a hard deadline for that. If you have a driver that hasn't driven since last week and they're on vacation and they come back this week, be aware if they can't log in, that's probably why that is. Final piece, and this is also potentially a dispatch stopping event, is, is MVR compliance, your moving vehicle record, okay, your motor vehicle record. Um, 
This has moved away from something where the drivers have to go in and sign what's called a COV, a certification of violations. And again, Josh, I just find myself doing the acronym suit <laughs> all the time, right? So COV having to do with the MVR and the SIG. So just, just bear with me. <laughs> drivers have to certify any moving violations that they have gotten in the past 12 months every year. Now, this past year, um, uh, DOT finally did away with that. And, no, and drivers no longer have to go in and say, look, I had a speeding event of seven miles per hour over the speed limit back on March 3rd of last year, right? They don't have to go back and remember what, what happened the last 12 months. But what will happen is that first advantage, whenever that MVR does expire, and you can check that in the driver file, in the qualification file, you can check where the MVR is going to expire on that date. Be aware that Fed, I'm sorry, first advantage is going to run that MVR report. And if there are any qualifying events that might disqualify a driver or cause a driver to be suspended, that would be things like excessive speeding, um, anything that might be like reckless driving, these kind of things will cause a driver to be temporarily disqualified from, from providing services. And so what would happen before, Josh, is when drivers would go in annually and sign their certificate of violations, that would kind of bring these things to their mind and, and they would tell their contractor, hey, um, just by the way, I had a speeding event that might disqualify me. So be aware of that when this MVR gets run by FedEx next week after I turn this in, it might come back and, and, and make me unable to run a route for a while. Now, if they forget to tell their contractor when the actual speeding or reckless driving event happens and First Advantage goes in and runs that sort of covertly under the radar, um, they're going to probably get disqualified without notice, right? They're just going to go in to log in one day. That was probably the day that Fed or Fed First Advantage just ran their MVR report and it came back with a hit. So be aware if you have drivers that have had speeding events, go ahead and solicit that information from them and see if there's anything that might prevent them from dispatching that might get them disqualified in the past 12 months. Yeah, and, and it's like, those are those are two things that feel little, they feel easy, yeah. but the morning you walk in and your driver can't dispatch and you're scrambling to try to find a backup driver or, or your manager's having to jump in a truck, those things do not feel little anymore. So uh, the, the idea here is, you know, you wanna know about these things in advance, you wanna plan for them and be aware of how to kind of structure your business around it. Um, so we'll continue to bring these updates to you because a lot of the times, uh, if you're not paying attention, these, these updates will roll out uh, and you won't know about it until your driver can't log in in the morning. So <laughs> we're trying to make sure uh, everybody's seen these and, and are up to date on them. That's all I got, Josh. Perfect. Okay, so uh, we're about to open it up to, to Q&A. So if people, if anyone has questions, you can go ahead and start typing them in now. Uh, a reminder for anyone who joined late, the question of the day uh, was, what was your favorite childhood candy and has it changed since then? So Jesse, why don't you go ahead and answer first? I'm going to go with the atomic fireball. Oh, and nice. This was always one that I just held like in high regard because for so many years, I was not able to stomach it. I wasn't able to handle it. I would see my dad eating it. I'm like, I know I've arrived in life when I can handle an atomic fireball. And here I am all these years later right, yeah. and I'm just, just chugging them down. Right. So it's no big deal now, but I still love them. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. I was I'm the same way about, uh, what was it? Warheads? Warheads. Warheads. Yeah. Yep. Same, yep. same thing. I could, I, it took me forever before I could eat them or you'd have to like soak them in water before you could <laughs> handle them as a kid. Um, I think my, my favorite candy was, and it probably still is Laffy Taffy. Uh, I've been, I like, I, you know, chocolate's fine. I've never loved it. And I, I don't really eat much chocolate now. And so I was trying to think like, do I eat any candy? And that's about, that's about the only one where if I'm offered a bunch of candy, like I'll take that 10 times out of 10. If it's, if it's in front of me, same way as a kid, same way now, uh, the jokes were just as bad then as they are now, but I still love them. <laughs> hey, you like what you like, you know, don't let anyone make you feel bad. That's right. Okay, so we are going to jump into the Q&A now. So I will start. We've got uh, one from Jessica. Uh, cherry ripes were and still are her favorite candy. To be honest, I don't, I don't remember cherry ripes, but I find with candy, remembering the names, I can't always do, but if I see it, I'll probably recognize it. <laughs> um, so our question is, 
I, she said she may have missed it, but uh, what equipment is required by FedEx on the safety side? Uh, what vendors do you have to have? So I'll go through this at a high level. Uh, if you have follow-up questions, we, we may be able to address them or it may be something we, we check in on afterwards. But uh, there's two sets of technologies, whether you're in PND or line haul. Uh, so pickup and delivery, PND, you need uh, VEDR is one. So VEDR, video event data recorders, which is what we were talking about earlier, earlier, which is basically a camera facing out and a camera facing in, recording context during accidents, but also checking for coachable events like were they speeding, were they wearing their seatbelt, texting while driving. So all of those types of things are a part of VEDR. And that's one of the only technologies where you are required to maintain it and work with a vendor. And that's the one that has key indicators you have to stay on top of. Uh, there are also something called, there's an anti-theft device for PND, where basically uh, it's designed to engage and prevent the, the vehicle from engaging when the driver leaves the vehicle. Uh, so uh, anti-theft devices, those should be installed on all the vehicles. There are backup cameras and uh, also uh, audio requirements where when you're backing up, there's a there's an audio component where it'll beep as you get close to something. Um, there are also uh, blind spot cameras on the sides of the vehicles required now. So you may often hear that just referred to as a three-way camera system. Uh, those are the main requirements now for PND. There may be some coming. They were originally going to come in uh, September of this year, but now that deadline's been pushed back. But that's lane departure, uh, speed limiters, and FCAM. None of those are current requirements for FedEx, but those would be the kind of the next three on the horizon. But you don't have to worry about it right now having it on vehicles. For line haul, uh, you still have to have better. So that's the same. Uh, you still have, for line haul, you actually do have to have FCAM. So I'll explain it now. So FCAM is forward collision uh, and accident mitigation. Avoidance. Avoidance and mitigation. Yeah. So uh, you can think about it as kind of a, a system that detects an impending crash and automatically engages the brakes. Um, so that is a requirement uh, in line haul. Uh, and, you know, it should be on most vehicles you're looking at if you're going through an acquisition. Uh, there is also something called, uh, what, uh, what am I forgetting, Jesse? Uh, there's, uh, speed, speed limiters, speed um, limiters on line hall. Yeah. And lane then, departure warnings. Yep. And then, um, the engine, uh, the, I think, I think that might, that's the, the better. And yeah, so I think it's all the same. Plus those, those the power tracking technology, uh, Oh, ELD. ELD. Yeah. 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 So just another of the acronyms, but uh, basically that is that, that syncs with the engine and the vehicle and it's designed to track and make sure your drivers are are uh, getting the right uh, driving hours, taking the right brakes, um, staying compliant with DOT regulations. So that's a requirement on line haul. So two different sides uh, of the coin there, but a lot of them are overlapped and similar. And we can we can share you a, a, a list of all of those if you're looking and, and still trying to, to make sense of all the acronyms and all the different technologies. Uh, next question here is from Amy. Uh, favorite question growing up was was Heath Bar and still is. Uh, Heath's one of those I really didn't like growing up, but uh, I've come around on Heath Bars. Uh, it's it's one of those that that I am more of a fan of now. I, I remember my big gripe with them was having like a milkshake with a Heath Bar in it, and it just the, the combination of it being really cold and Heath is already sticky. That was, that was the killer for me as a child, <laughs> but I, I do enjoy it now. Um, so she said her territory is really rural, uh, doesn't often have connection with the better systems. Is there sort of some sort of system in place to accommodate for the loss of connectivity? Uh, so the important thing is even when it's not connected and transmitting, it's still recording. Uh, so when you next hit an area where you're connected or where you have service, it'll upload. So uh, the thing you may not have is instantaneous updates if something happens while there's no connection. Um, it depends, uh, you know, it, it may depend just on, on the service if some have better service in, in an area over the other, but um, it, the connectivity hit in terms of how FedEx tracks, tracks connectivity is more just making sure it connects once every four days. So that that standard will still be, hit uh, as long as they're, you're connected to the internet at any point, or it can, can, can access the towers at any point in the day. So at, at minimum, you should be able to at the terminal. Um, but yeah, once, once you kind of get back in service, it'll, it'll update. 
Yeah, you're not you're not going to lose any events, uh, Amy. I don't want you to worry about that. It's it's all going to be recorded locally in the device and saved. And so uh, the only thing you're going to lose is if you want to monitor the driver in real time, you're not going to be able to have that. Um, but you're not going to lose anything in terms of like failing KIs because you know it comes back later. And it's it's not going to be anything like that. Yeah. Um, next one here is from Mike, and he said blow pops. I bought them for a nickel and sold them on the school bus for a quarter. <laughs> That is perfect. Entrepreneur from an, uh, from a young age, Mike. <laughs> um, so his question is, what are our thoughts on one FedEx and its impact on contractors? Uh, so uh, that's talking about the announcement this morning that FedEx made. And from everything we've seen so far, it seems to just be a kind of a, a formalization of what we've known about for a long time in that uh, the Express Network is rolling out. Uh, and well, there's an intention to roll, to combine the express and ground networks. This laid out some more concrete timelines of how they're going to be doing it. Uh, and on the whole, it's still really positive. Um, I, I, you know, we want that volume to enter the ground network. We want that to be something that continues to provide benefits to FedEx. Uh, if we we do need as contractors for FedEx to be profitable and making money, if they aren't, it's really hard for us to see any improvements to see any kind of any of that come to us. So the fact that FedEx has been increasing their forecasts, they're increasing the dividend payouts uh, that they announced this morning by 10%, uh, all of that's good. It means that they're on the right track internally and that uh, at, at the corporate level, they feel that they're uh, improving and the stock price, uh, you know, we want all of those things to increase. So I see this all as a net positive for, for FedEx and for contractors. Uh, next one we have here is from Tim. He said, Carmel's as a kid, still Carmel's now. Uh, Holden, uh, you know, sticking to his guns. <laughs> um, so of course, uh, reminding drivers about safety is important. Is placing safety, you know, a safety reminder sticker in the vehicle appropriate? Have you ever done anything like that, Jesse? Absolutely. Yeah, we put things like, you know, always buckle up. Uh, these are your trucks. You know, anything you think you can keep in the driver's, you know, front of, front of mind, front and center for them, um, obviously, as long as it's not obstructing their view in some way, that's very common thing that we see is, is just warning stickers, little cute little mottos like just drive, like if you're behind the wheel, the only thing you should be doing is driving. So short little mottos that are easy to remember on stickers. Absolutely. We would definitely encourage that. Yep. All right. Um, so next one here is from Jessica again. Uh, so basically, she's just saying, is there a way to connect with other contractors to learn more about day-to-day uh, -day operations if you're new in the space? Um, seems like it's it can be hard to find that list. Uh, yes, it is very hard to find that list. I would say uh, that is not, you know, to a certain extent, that's something FedEx is, is historically discouraged. Uh, you know, you don't, they don't want there to be any kind of uh, any way for a union to ever come about. Uh, so they've, his, they've uh, kind of discouraged this uh, kind of group uh, get together and thinking. But what I would, I would point you towards is a lot of the events I mentioned at the beginning, you might have missed at the beginning of the webinar, but we do host uh, regional happy hours and road shows that are designed to educate, in, you know, on, on key areas. There's different topics for each of our road shows but also designed for anyone in the area to come together and network and meet each other. Uh, so I mentioned at the beginning, but you might have missed it. We have happy hour in D.C. coming up next week. We have a fleet roadshow in Nashville at the end of the month. Uh, and, and if you go to our website, to our events page, we have happy hours and roadshows happening throughout the year. And then the big one is hopefully everybody will be there in July for the, the expo in Vegas, where, uh, you know, a, a significant portion of contractors will be there. Hey Josh, that's uh, one of, literally one of the names of one of the uh, sessions we do at our summit is day in the life of a PD contractor. So right. absolutely, <laughs> Jessica, if that's something you're interested in. That's uh, nothing I would you know recommend higher than than that summit to, to come to. That's right. Um, all right. So next one here from David. Uh, his answer is you know both then and now Goldenberg peanut chews. So uh, David has. Also held true to his guns. No, no taste changes over the years. Um, so his question is, uh, if your service area is mostly home and not ground, will the conversion to delivering express help the territory much? <clears throat> it, I don't know if you have any thoughts on it. I can jump in after. Yeah, honestly, I don't know what the break, the current, you know, 
uh, breakdown is uh, residential to business deliveries right now, David? That's a good question. I would I would be interested in knowing that myself. You know what FedEx Express does? They're completely separate from ground as of now. So I, I really don't even know how to. to I, I wouldn't want to pontificate on that and then be wrong. So I just don't have enough information to answer. Yeah, that. And, and I'll really say it's going to vary depending on the area too. So <clears throat> we're we're you know waiting to see. Um, but most likely as that continues to roll out. So they've, they've put kind of a, about a 14 month timeline on it on when they'll be done with it, but it'll be, um, you know, something they're working through and thinking through. So I would expect communication and some kind of forecast for you to expect the type of volume uh, in your territory in the particular areas as, as they continue to roll this out. Yeah, I would, I would add one thing to that, not in terms of the, the, the spread between, you know, home and ground, but uh, the thing I would be prepared for is with your drivers. I mean, there's a lot of drivers now, if you have a very home, residential, heavy territory, it's not super uncommon in the space. And at David, I don't know if this is your experience or not, but uh, some contractors, if there's no scheduled pickups on the routes, they let their drivers pretty much come in whenever they want, as long as they get the route done before dark or whatever they're fine with it, right? The, whether the driver dispatches right at 8 a.m. when the turn, you know, when they turn the drivers loose and gets done at three or whatever their full day is, or if they want to come in at 11 and get done at seven. But some contractors don't care about that. Be aware that with the integration of Express, if they start adding these P1s, P2s, P3s, these priority overnights and things like that, there will be more of a time pressure, you know, time sensitive pressure on your drivers to come in, it's going to change the culture of your team a little bit to make sure that these express deliveries are getting service. So just be aware that is definitely a potential that's on the horizon. Yeah. So we'll, we'll continue to see how time sensitive deliveries play out uh, as it hits the ground network, but we will keep you all updated as soon as we have more for you. Um, other than that, if, if there's no last second questions, anyone wants to throw in there, uh, we can go ahead and end it for the week. So you've got basically the next 15 seconds while I while I close that and talk if you want to try to rapid type. Um, but uh, I mentioned it before, uh, we've got a ton of events coming up this month and a ton more coming up in the, the following months. So if you want to engage with us in person, you know, as much as I love, uh, you know, sharing time with Jesse and, and only getting to see you all on Q&A, it is great when I get to meet everyone in person, when you get to meet the team and meet other contractors in the area. So uh, all of our events are free. All of the food and drink are free. So if you see one in your area that, that you know, that kind of fits the type of thing you're looking for, just you can just go ahead and register on the site. Uh, and for everyone who is, uh, you know, uh, local to Nashville, um, outside, we've got two coming up uh, at the end of this month. So um, for all that, uh, it looks like we don't have any more questions, so I will go ahead and close out for the week. So, Jesse, thank you so much for joining, and for everybody else, we will see you again next week.